everybody and welcome to this week's quilting video. Apologies for it being a little bit late but stuff, <laughs> just stuff. I'm okay, everything's okay but um, these things happen. Second apology, <laughs> I've been in the garden and I've got a bit right on the end of my nose so um, that's life. <laughs> Apologies again. So it's not a beauty channel is it? It's a quilting channel and as you can see there is a quilt. This one wasn't planned, it was unexpected and I've called this one the Harlequin quilt and it measures 43 across, 48 down and it's another one for Project Linus so for the teenagers. When I've completed this um, and put the label on, I think I've got one label left. I'm hoping to do one more of these rainbow type quilts for a teenager, use that label and then I'll take them all off to our local sector. So how did this one come about? Like I say, it was a surprise to me because I've gone into the no by July and two reasons really. One, my stash was beginning to grow a little bit and I've got one cupboard and all of my fabric, apart from some of the Project Linus material, has to live in this cupboard. So if I'm having trouble closing the doors, then it's time to stop buying and to use what I've got. I think what I am going to try and do from now on is start a quilt with fabric that I already have. I do have a couple of designs that I want to make and I haven't got any fabric for those. So barring those two, after I've completed them, then I shall use some of the fabric in my stash as a starter and see if I can get through it that way. So for this one, what I did was just take out all of my odd blocks. I don't have a lot of orphan blocks. I just have a few small pieces. Sometimes if I've got a tiny bit of fabric left over from a project, I might make half square triangles or I might make some squares within the squares. So I've had a hankering to make a quilt with a black background. And so what I decided to do was to take out all of the odd blocks that I had that had black in or a black background and see what I could do. So once I'd looked through I had all of these. Now they do look like on point squares and they were my starter. Well I've just put up on my design wall 16 3 inch hourglass blocks. They're black and white and I've put them in a checkerboard pattern. So I'll put that last one in. Okay the first thing I'm going to do if you look on the left hand side and the right hand side you can see there are only half squares and I think I will complete those so that there is a black background to this quilt. So I'll show you how I make them and then I'll sew that block together and decide what to do next. So these are taken from my three inch square stash and I'm going to take a black and an off white. I'm going to place them on top of each other and then I'm going to sew around all four sides, snip the corners off, cut on the diagonal and then join them together to complete those on point squares. <laughs> So these are all half square triangles put together and they look like they're squares on point. And the reason I like to do that is there's no waste. There are other ways that you could make uh, an on point square. I could have just taken a white square of fabric and snowballed black corners on each of those but then you've got small half square triangles left over and they would have been too small really to have done anything with so there's no waste in this method and it's just one of the things that I like to do. 
So while I've got the black thread on the machine, I've joined all of the black seams together that were already made. And now I'm just finger pressing these open to the dark side. And then I'll join those together before I change over to the white thread. So if you're interested about the thread I've used, um, where it was white on white fabric, I changed to white thread. And for the rest, I use black apart from when I put these on point squares together, join these half square triangles, the center parts on those were with a silver gray. And now I'm going to change thread to white, join that on, add that to the sides, and then sew the whole piece together. And I'll press that and we'll have a look at it. Well, there we go. It's a long way from being a quilt, but it's a start. So once I put all of those on point squares together, those half square triangles, I sort of went a bit flat really. So I just left it. It wasn't keenness quilting. I just sort of wasn't inspired to do anything. There's so many ideas sometimes. It's just landing on one, isn't it? That's what causes the problem. So I left the room, came in next morning, and this is what I did first thing. I've added four more blocks to the bottom row and I'll tell you why. I just wanted to leave my options open because I had no idea really what I was going to do next. I thought that if these on point squares, the white here, were four across and then six across, an even number would be better than having four and five. So if I wanted to double up the size, which I did later, with these on point squares, it makes the maths and the shapes come together much easier. So that's all really, just leaving my options open. At this point, I still didn't have a clue where this quilt was gonna go. Well, I've looked into my fabric scraps that I've pre-cut or I save from other projects. There isn't very much, but it suddenly dawned on me what I want to do. Let me explain. And I'm going back to the rainbow again, but I'm going to use those squares within square blocks. And now that I altered those on point squares, I'll be able to get six down the left, six down the right. And when I've added those, I'll be able to put six along the top and six along the bottom. So if you've seen any of my my videos before you'll know that I really love squares within squares or log cabins they're my favorite blocks and so when I was feeling a little bit stumped that's where I gravitated towards so then automatically you can see it's a medallion style quilt I hadn't planned that um, it just sort of evolved that way so squares within squares and I'm thinking I'll use six rainbow colours and I'll need four of each and I'll show you a quick way of doing that using your scraps if you have any. So I've just sewn about six inches roundabout of the bright colour fabric with a black strip on each side and now I'm just finger pressing to the dark side and then I'll take that to the iron. As you can see, I've decided to do some brighter yellow. That yellow looked a little bit pale. So now I'm going to press these and then I'm going to slice them. So I shall get a nice straight edge. And I want four sets of these. And now I'm just going to get some of the black fabric and I'll sew these in strips along each side and then trim to three inch squares. If you want to be super accurate with the trimming, one of these little centre squares fits exactly over the square. So if you look closely, you can see the square within a square fits nicely in the middle of that three inch square. And then I just trim down the sides. So you don't have to be that accurate as long as the square measures a three inch by three inch. Um, I think really it's just back history baggage that I carry with me. I did teach autistic children for quite a while and I know <laughs> 
that they would have liked that to have been in the center. And so this quilt, for all I know, might end up with uh, a child on the spectrum. And so if it does, there's nothing there that would make them anxious, but you don't have to. So I've trimmed everything and now I'm going to join them. And as you can see, there's two seams here. And on that side, there's aren't any seams at all here. So I'll put no seams against two seams. And that's how I'll join those blocks. So I've sewn all four sides on now and I think that looks really nice. And what it has done is those straight edges on those squares within squares have pulled all of those wavy edged half square triangles that on the bias that were a little bit stretchy. So they've pulled all those into line now so they're nice and square. So that's one of my little tips, so it's something I've learned over the years. I don't tend to press if my blocks are on the bias. This one I had and it did stretch. Now you could be tempted to trim them down once they've stretched, but you're in danger then of losing the points on your one point squares. And so if you can try and maneuver a little tuck here against a straight piece, these pieces were three inches. So I knew those, that little area there had to fit that so I would maneuver each of those in and then it keeps that nice and square so again you do it your way that's the way I do it. So I think I might introduce two more colours and this time I'll reverse it so the small square is black and the outer edge will be rainbows if I've got the fabric. So I thought I'd have a look and see what that looks like so all I've made up are the four yellow ones at the moment and I think that might look nice for the next round and we'll have a look and see what that looks like. So Still yet no idea what I wanted to do. I was just playing, like I say, love squares within squares and I thought that would look nice. So I tried the yellows, I thought yes it does look nice and so I put that row in. Well I've just finished sewing on that round of the quilt and I think that looks really lovely. And after I did that I still had no idea where this quilt was going, but I like the look of it up till now. So I think for the next round, I'm just going to go black and white. So on the next round, I'm going to do square within a square again. And this time it will be a white square surrounded by a black border. And we'll have a look and see what that looks like. So I'm making up those squares within squares exactly the same way as I made the brighter colour ones before. I'm not sure really why I chose to have a black border around a white square apart from wanting to introduce some more of the back black background not easy to say and I thought that would just set those colours off a little bit. And that's how it looks with the black and white squares on the outside. And now I have made some on point squares, all the rainbow colours to go around that. So now I wanted to get the quilt moving a little bit, to be honest. I could have carried on doing squares within squares, but um, I need to be tying up loose ends for this month. Like I say, I've got the Festival of Quilts coming up and I don't want things left over into August. And so these on point squares within squares, they're growing the quilt five and a half inches each side. And I think they look really lovely. I think the scale works. So I tried it first. I was pleased with it. And that's why I went down that route. <music> commented before on my sharp points apart from the no iron sort of uh, 
policy. All it is really is nesting the seams. As long as I've got a good quarter inch seam when I join these half square triangles together and then I nest them at the beginning of each of the joins, then they usually work out okay. So perfect points every time. Not quite perfect enough for me though. Well I've added the on point squares and that looked very nice and bright and lovely but it wasn't quite big enough so I've used some three inch white and black squares that I had in my stash and I've made a border of those. So all of those three inch black and white squares I had already cut in my stash. They were just bits of fabric that I had left over from previous projects and I think it gives it a nice finish. And then if you look on the left hand side you can see I've just hung some thin strips of black fabric that was already cut as well and was in my log cabin stash. I just about had enough that's going to keep those seams in place I need to sort out some batting and a backing for it but I think I'm going to call it finished it measures 43 across and 48 deep and so that's it it's another unexpected scrap busting flimsy yeah I'm calling this one the harlequin i think it will look lovely when it's all quilted up now monday this monday i am going to hand over my quilt for the competition and i will document the process of how i made my entry for the sustainable quilt category and that will be probably a two-part video because it took me a long time to make that quilt and I want to explain to you the process that I went through making it a competition quilt and also what it's like at the quilt show and what it looks like on the stand and you never know I might win a prize I probably won't but we won't know that until the second video I won't know by the time I've made the first one whether it's a prize winner or not but I'll share that with you next week so take really good care of yourselves if you are still with me thank you very much for your company and I'll finish with a shot of this harlequin quilt I'll see you next week on time hopefully bye <music>